Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. Today I will show you a work that I've been doing on my PDD and it is related to the generation of high resolution CT scans using a diffusion based model. This is the summary of my presentation. I will talk about the problem uh, related to low resolution CT scans, the methodology I used, the model I used, the results, and the conclusion. So, okay, what is the problem with CT scans? They lack fine grained information about the sample, as we can see in the picture on the left side. Uh, for example, the pores are not well defined. It is difficult to see if a dark region is indeed a pore or a group of pores like this or like this and so on. So the, ob the objective here is to generate a possible high resolution version of the low resolution slice, which could help to visualize the internal information of a sample. So it could be interesting when we cannot have the high resolution scan due to time constraints, the scanner cannot handle the sample size. It is expensive to, to scan all the core sample like this case and so on. Okay, so the first step of the workflow is to crop a block of the sample. So this step is interesting when this scan has more than one piece of sample inside, which is precisely my case. So I used a car sample composed by eight, around eight blocks, composed mostly by real worked faces. So blocks one that are hidden <laughs> to four, like this one, and shrubs from block five to eight. For the model, I used the block six to train, so to buy shrubs, and the blocks four and five to test the performance. Okay, so this is the block four, more, more details. You can see the difference between both resolutions, and here we can sell way more data, way more information. And this is the block five. This is the same idea. We can see the bigger structures and so on. So the next step is the resampling. It was important to reduce the computational cost to train the model during my research. So after resampling, I did the registration. So the registration is important to have a almost perfect spatial match between both resolutions. It is ideal to build a data set for a test like, like this one, the, a translation between two images. So here we can see an, an example, so be, before and after. <laughs> so here was before, so we can see that the samples are not exactly paired. So after the registration, we can see that the low resolution image was translated a little bit and also rotated to match the, the high resolution image. Okay, so the final step is the training and inference of the model. So what about the model? I used a model called SR3, which works by using a process called diffusion. So what is diffusion? So the diffusion process uh, consists in adding small portions of noise for each iteration during the training phase. So we can see a, an example of this process here. We can see a lot of other samples. So it starts with an input, the low resolution image in our case, and it iteratively adds noise until there is no information left but 
pure random Gaussian noise. From this noise, the model tries to reduce the noise until there is no noise left, returning our, our high resolution image. So, so in this video we could see this second part, the inference part. So here I show an example of this inference part, starting from noise and con continuously reducing no this noise. So here is an example of input, input patches, and here is the generated slice followed by the high resolution slice, the reference. So it, it is important to mention that the model works yet <laughs> only with 2D slice, like this one in the Z axis, exactly as shown here. So keep that in mind. And finally, the results. So in this slide, we can see the block 4 in three resolutions. So low resolution, the generated resolution, and the high resolution. And just to remember, the model was trained using a block composed by shrubs, the block 6. So the model never saw these faces, the reworked faces. Okay, so at first we can see a sort of improvement on the fine details. So here we can see a lot of these smaller pores in comparison to the low resolution. And we can see also an improvement on the dense minerals. Like this, this, because in low resolution we can see this this big artifact and on the generated this artifact is minimized. The important thing is due to the 2D model, we can see this kind of lamination artifact, but it's caused by this and we can further can be further improved by doing this in 3D. In following in following works but yeah in general the model did did well in this case so we can see a xy slice of this block 4 it is more easy to see the improvement here so the difference between the generated and high resolution slice on here drifts around this darker blue color and the majority of the slice meaning that there is a very low difference between the two and of course the light lighter green here here and throughout the, the slice meaning that on the border and on the dense minerals there was a higher difference between both the slices, but okay. So these are some metrics of the inference for the block 4. The little black arrows, like here and here, shows the way to read the metrics. So arrow up means the bigger the better, <laughs> and vice versa. So the, the x-axis shows the slice number, so here from the start of the block all the way <clears throat> to the end of the block, so here around 340. So also, it is interesting to see the difference between regions like in this chart. So you can see that it starts the slice 200 and it could be explained by a change of internal structures of the block which could be almost equal on the low resolution and high resolution so and and thus the generate sample will not be that different in comparison to the low resolution slice
So as shown in the chart, the model could generate a re reasonable scan, performing better than the low resolution scan in these three metrics. So one more slide for the block four is the last one, I swear. And okay, so these histograms are related to poor network modeling. And as we can see, the generated sample behaved similarly to the high resolution sample. So we can see here, so the so this kind of this so it has almost the same distribution comparison to the high resolution slice for the power volume and here to the power radius we can see almost the same but in this case there are this difference in the in this high highest bar but it but besides the model respected this distribution for the block five we can see the same lamination effect Okay, but the result was almost the same. The model could replicate a good amount of fine details throughout the sample. So there were some misses, for instance, this is small porous region with dense minerals, to be a little bit worse, that the model could not replicate inside the, this blue this blue ellipse so here you can see that there is nothing an other example of a miss is the continuity of the shrubs so like here so like here showing this red box so the difficulty here is that the low resolution slice did not preserve enough information that could give a hint to the model for uh, that these kind of structures were there. Therefore, the model was safe enough by not creating something there, these region, regions in, in freestyle way. <laughs> okay. So this is the same comparison in which we can verify the difference between the generated slice and the high resolution reference. It behaves almost the same as the block 4, with mostly the most part of the image was blue, this darker blue. But it was different, different in some cases like this, like this one, so the biggest artifacts. From the CT scan, there is no way to to avoid this unfortunately but yes and these small pores around so here we can see the metric plots so they also behave similarly to in comparison to the block four but the difference were more pronounced so the difference in the mean square error and also in the other metrics but not in the structural similarity so yeah, but in in general, the model could predict better, which was expected, considering that the training was made using a sample with similar geological content. So the, both were shrubs, both block 5 and 6. So for the poor network modeling, we can observe that the model did better in this case. So there was not a big miss here and here maybe. <laughs> But okay, so in general, it was a little bit better. So here, we have the flow lines inside the block 5. But take this with a grain of salt because I had some problems generating this simulation on both blocks, such as unreal permeability values, a bunch of tests without any lines, and so on. So we can see that the generated image could replicate in some way, the internal, internal flow of the high resolution scan. So, in the low resolution, there was bigger pores due to the lack of refinement of the pore edges. 
And here you can see that both are similar, not equal, but similar. Similar enough. <clears throat> so those were the results. So in conclusion, the model could replicate <clears throat> the information found in the high resolution starting from the low resolution slice. And we can also state that the training set matters as the best result was the block five by a little margin, but it was better, which has the same pages. So for the next steps, we can improve the model by training for longer times. So using more than one pages in the training set, well, more than one block and so on. And that was it. So thank you for everyone joining this slide for the support. And thank you for your attention.